Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Spencer, and today I am pretty stoked to be working with someone whom I've never worked with before. So the other day I had posted to my IG stories that I was looking for a model to do a makeup look on for my videos here on YouTube, and someone by the name of Olivia had slid up in my DMs and volunteered as tribute. Fast forward to today, I'm gonna be doing a really dark black smoked out eye on her, and we're gonna pair it with some beautiful flawless skin and a nude lip. You can't go wrong with that. So if you wanna learn step by step how I achieved this look right here, then keep on watching. So I'm starting out by using this Laura Mercier Moisturizing Glow Mask to prep the skin. If you've watched any of my recent videos, you know how much I love this product. I'm applying it with a beauty blender on the face and I bring it down the neck and chest. And keep in mind, a little of this product goes a long way, so you won't need much of it. Next, I'm taking a little razor to clean up around the brows. I don't like plucking the brow hairs only because it does cause permanent damage to the hair follicle, making it less likely to grow back. Uh, but this is also a really good tool to use to clean up any peach fuzz you may have around the face. For foundation, I'm using a cream foundation from RCMA. This has got to be one of my ride or dies when it comes to foundations. I've used it for years now and always kind of find myself going back to it. Working with the cream foundation makes blending the cream contour a dream, but this is for sure a foundation you're gonna to wanna to set with a powder. Otherwise, as you can see, you can start to look real greasy real quick. For Olivia, I'm using two different shades, Shinto 7 and Shinto 6. I started with applying the darker shade first around the face and then followed up with a lighter shade. Her face and arms are a bit darker than her neck and chest, so I'll end up having to bring this foundation down so everything really matches seamlessly. To bring some light and dimension back to the face, I'm using the Too Faced Born This Way concealers in shades Vanilla and Honey. I mix the two in the back of my hand to create a perfect shade and then I apply it to the areas you see here. Full disclosure, this is gonna end up being a full coverage glam uh, because I do end up going in with another layer of this concealer after I do the cream contour. I've read a few of the comments in the past from people saying that I shouldn't be using this much product, but a couple things to keep in mind that this is just makeup. It's not that serious, it washes off at the end of the day, and it's no secret that my background in makeup comes from working on clients for red carpet, photo shoots, TV, and, and film. So makeup reads a heck of a lot different on camera than it does in person. A lot of times when we see our favorite celebrities in carpet photos or press footage and makeup that appears to be natural, oftentimes it's actually caked on. And it just comes down to how it reads on camera, the setup of the lighting and tons of other factors. So everything that I share with you in these tutorials can always be taken down a notch to fit the coverage that you feel most comfortable wearing. For contour, I'm using Huda Beauty's Tantorn Contour Cream in shade Medium, and I'm applying this product in the areas I want depth, and using a dense foundation brush to do so. As I was saying a bit ago, since the base is so creamy from the moisturizer and foundation, this cream contour is really going to blend effortlessly. And as you see, I don't really aim for perfection when applying contour, since it's all going to be thoroughly blended anyways. I just want to get the basic placement down, which is around the forehead, cheekbones, jawline, and nose. And like most of the products I use, I will first press it onto the back of my hand before applying it onto the face. And this just helps prevent me from dispensing too much product in one spot. I use the brush to stipple the product onto the skin and will then use the beauty blender to blend it out. Speaking of the beauty blender, it's important to note that I use the same beauty blender throughout the whole makeup application. I don't switch between uh, the foundation and the highlight and the contour. I usually use the pointy end of the beauty blender to blend out the highlight, and I'll use the rounder end of the beauty blender to blend out the contour and foundation. And here we go with that second layer of highlight. I'm using the same Too Faced concealers that I had used before. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm talking too much and y'all are probably sick of hearing my voice by this point, but this part of the video really does have a lot of blending involved to a point where it's a bit excessive. But I wanted to keep this footage in the video for those of you who like to see the blending process rather than me cutting it out of the final tutorial. So I'm just gonna leave this up on the screen for your guys' entertainment, and I'm gonna go take a puff of my asthma inhaler, wherever it may be, and enjoy a generous, generous glass of Prosecco, and I'll be right back.
All righty, I am back and better than ever. <clears throat> okay, so we're just finishing up the blending processes. And as you can see, even though I use quite a bit of product, it doesn't look overdone or, or cakey. It still looks like skin, or at least in my opinion, but we still gotta set it with powder. To do that, I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills setting powder in the shade Deep Peach. And with a large fluffy blending brush, I'm gonna lightly place that product around the face with a very light hand because I don't want the bristles of the brush to leave behind strokes on the skin. I then go in with a powder puff to really press that powder into the skin so it sets and locks that foundation in. Looking at the footage, it, it looks like I'm a bit aggressive with a powder puff, but, but really I promise I'm being gentle with Olivia. I get a lot of questions too on where I get my powder puffs from and I buy them in bulk from a makeup store here in Los Angeles called Namies, but I've seen tons of different options online through Amazon. It's important to make sure when using these heavy creams that they are being set with powders, otherwise they're gonna slip and slide all over the place throughout the day and you're gonna be looking like you just ran a marathon. I'm taking that same powder to set the under eyes lightly, but before I set it with powders, it's crucial to blend out any of the product that may have creased because once you set it with a powder, it's locked into whatever place it was in before setting it. So I blend out the under eye with our beauty blender and straight away I go in with a powder puff to set. And I'll use another powder here in a second to bake. The same goes for the lids. Blend out the creases and then set straight away. I'm using a fluffy eyeshadow brush to set the eyelids only because I needed something a bit smaller and more precise than the powder puff I was using. I'm using the Benefit Hula Bronzer and the Caramel Shade to bronze up the skin and emphasize the cream contour we had done. With the bronzing brush, I'm lightly buffing that into the skin. In this case, slow and steady wins the race, always. You don't wanna go in heavy handed with bronzer. You want to slowly build up this pigment so that way there's no patchiness or, or uneven placement of the pigment. And I'm mostly placing this product anywhere I had previously used the cream contour. I tend to build and build layers of product, especially when I'm shooting in studio lights and flash photography so that nothing looks washed out. And yes, I read the comments, I know what you're thinking. I am extremely fair, beyond fair. I'm glow in the dark at this point, I know. I haven't seen the light of day in maybe 20 years. Okay, as you saw, I'm using the Ben Nye Banana Powder to bake. This shade isn't going to be for everyone, but it's the perfect shade to use on Olivia to bring out her beautiful golden undertones. So with my powder puff, I start with baking the under eyes. I work my way from the inner corner of the eye and work my way outwards towards the hairline. An easy way to do this that's pretty much foolproof is just by following your bottom lash line straight outwards. And I'll also use this same powder to bake the chin, the center of the forehead, and the jawline. Moving on to the eyebrows, I'm going in with a brow pomade in shade Dark Brown from Anastasia Beverly Hills, and I'm slowly gonna build up this brow. I've never been one um, who's too fond of really harsh eyebrows, so I'm taking my time with building this product up into my desired shape and fullness. And this is another time the powder puff really becomes handy. It's my best friend for times like these where I need to have my hand rest on the face, but without wrecking everything we just worked so hard to achieve. After I've placed that pomade through the outer third of the brow, I'm starting to blend it forward to get a really soft gradient effect and then take a bit of bronzer to contour the inner brow bone. I end up doing the other brow off camera just to save a bit of time, but now I can start the eye makeup. I'm taking an eyeshadow blending brush with a bit of brown eyeshadow and I'm blending it on the lid, starting from the outer corner and working my way in. Now at the time, I just reached for any brown eyeshadow that was laying around. Honestly, I can't remember which palette it was, but you can pretty much take any matte neutral brown eyeshadow you already own and achieve a similar result, if not identical. With a smaller detail brush, I start placing that same eyeshadow on the bottom lash line. And then with the Benefit bronzer we used earlier, I buff and blend that shadow downwards. Now for my favorite part, I'm using the Jet Deep Black Eyeliner from Anastasia Beverly Hills, and I'm gonna begin placing this product in the waterline with an angled liner brush. I put it on the back of my hand first, just so that I can keep the original product sanitary by not having to dip my brush back into it after using it on my model. I then use the gel to tight line and line the upper eyelid. With a look like this, it's important to tight line because we're needing that intense black to achieve this dramatic look. It'll also help blend in the lash we'll be using here in a minute. 
As you can see, I really start lifting this gel liner upwards to begin creating the shape I want. This placement will differ upon everyone's eye shape really, but when even when going into this, I didn't know just how dramatic I wanted this to be. So I would slowly build up this liner and then would take a step back and examine if I should stop there or keep adding on. But as you can see, I, I, I didn't hold back. <laughs> I wanted it to be really dramatic. And the reason I'm using a black gel rather than a black eyeshadow is because I need it to be super opaque. An eyeshadow alone oftentimes won't give me that deep black that I'm looking for. But I do eventually take a detail blending brush with some black eyeshadow and start blending that gel outwards. That's why you just saw me put a bit more of that baking powder underneath the eyes so that in case there was any fallout from the shadow, it wouldn't ruin the under eyes. I can't remember if I had used the same palette for the black eyeshadow as I did the brown, but like I said earlier, you can pretty much use any black eyeshadow you already have. We're not using much of it anyways, just enough to blend out the edges of the gel. And the same will go for the under eye. I'll take my detail blending brush with a bit of black eyeshadow and start blending that gel downwards. A lot of this footage is kind of tedious, but I just wanted to show you guys in real time the blending process. And by no means is it perfect. In fact, I think um, I think that's why I love a smoky eye so much, is because it doesn't have to be perfect. I think it's actually the slight imperfections in a smoky eye that makes it effortless and, and really striking, in my opinion. But there still is a lot of back and forth. You'll see me adding more gel liner in areas I want it to be more opaque, and then I'll go back in with my blending brush to buff it out. Now I did apply the lashes off camera, but the ones I used were from a brand called XOXO Kalani, and they are in the style named Buena. I'm then taking a large fluffy face brush to dust off the remaining powder we have on the face. I'm using a blush from Laura Mercier in the shade Peach, and it's, um, it's exactly just that, I guess. It's a peach toned blush with a pink undertone that looks especially beautiful on deeper skin tones. It has a slight shimmer in it, which I'm usually not crazy about in blushes, but this one isn't too intense. To make the skin glow, I'm going in with a highlighter from Ofra Cosmetics in the shade Beverly Hills. And as you can see, I'm barely just buffing it into the skin and it builds up to be such a beautiful and striking highlight. I've really been into Ofra highlighters lately, but sometimes I get so stuck in my ways with specific products that I'm just used to using all the time. So I'm really trying to step outside my comfort zone and try new things, you know what I mean? Okay, we're on to the last step of this look. I'm using the KKW Nude Lip Liner in the shade 2.5 to line the lips. You all are probably so over me creating nude lips on every single video of this channel of mine, but I promise, either my next video or the one after, I'll do something a bit more bold in color. But for now, I'm bringing this liner in just a little bit towards the center of the mouth, but keeping the center completely bare. Then I'm applying a shine lipstick from Buxom in the shade Goddess. I'm concentrating this product in the center of the lips and I'm taking my finger just to buff out the edges outwards. Because the eye look is so heavy, I really wanted to keep the lips light in product. So by buffing this lipstick in, it will give a more worn in kind of look. And lastly, for a little extra shine, I'm using a ColourPop lip gloss in the shade Champagne Mommy and applying a small amount in the center of the lips. I'm applying this directly with the wand only because I ended up giving it to Olivia. Otherwise, I would just use it with a lip brush. And in case you forgot, we took this natural beauty from this and turned her into a diva. There we have it kids. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future on my channel, then be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below. Also, if you wanna be my model in any of my future YouTube videos, go ahead and follow me on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. I'm always posting stories on there looking for fresh faces to work with. So if you wanna be the next canvas I paint, then hit me up there. And until then, I'll see you next time.